The Knights of Redcliffe are ready to fight at your disposal. Have you spoken to the revered mother? Has she offered anything? Of course I did. She said she could not help us. If Ban Tegan trusts you enough to charge you without offense, then I think she would have to regardless of your race. That gladdens my heart to hear it. As you wish, Grey Warden. Make a watch over you. Something you need? We need what little armor and weapons we got repaired, and quickly, or half of us will be fighting without either. Owen's the only blacksmith who can do it, but the stubborn fool refuses to even talk. If we're to be ready for tonight, we'll need that crotchety bastard's help. His daughter, Valena, is one of the Alessa's maids. So he hasn't heard from her since this whole business started. He demanded we attack the castle, break down the gate, and force our way in. I said it was impossible, but he wouldn't listen. He's locked himself in the smithy now. I can't force him to do repairs. He said he'd rather die first. I'd appreciate it. If he doesn't help, he'll die like the rest of us. What good will that do anyone then? Go away. Curse you. Leave me in peace. You've already taken everything out of my stores. There's nothing left. Hey? You're not Murdoch. Who are you and what are you doing at my door? Hmm? All right, all right. Let me undo the locks. All I ask is that you don't make any trouble. Make his breath. What is that smell? It's like someone set a brewery on fire. Somebody's been drinking. So I let you in? You wanted to talk? Now we're talking? Mind telling me who you are? Funny. You didn't sound like a dwarf through the door. Can't say I expected that. Anyhow, my name's Owen, though you might already know that. Care to join me as I get besotted? Or is there something in particular you wanted? You mean, why are these creatures attacking the village? Obviously, something wicked corrupts the castle. My daughter used to tell me the Arlesa was up to something, hiding things from her husband. I told Valena she was imagining things. But maybe the Alessa was involved in something. Blood magic, maybe. I'd never make such accusations. But maybe 
If she was using foul magic, then maybe she just did it that. She thought the Arlesa was having an affair with some tutor she hired for the boy, Connor. I never listened much to her talk about it, though I wish now I had. It doesn't matter anyway. She's lost to me, and I can't do anything about her warnings now. Only that she's an Orlesian girl from beyond the Western Mountains. Far too young for our Arl. That's what I say. And too proud and edge strong from the sounds of it. Of course not. And who would I tell? And what good would it do now, eh? I just wish I paid more heed to my girl. Like what? Look around. The militia took everything they could use. I could start up the forge again, but I won't, since Murdoch won't listen to me. If you mean you want me to smith something for you, then no. But feel free to take whatever's left. Don't suppose it matters much anymore. Everything that they could find, sure. Walked in here and took it all right off the walls. Hey, maybe not. I'd be stupid to keep everything out here where someone can find it easy. Tell you what, you want valuables? I've got some hidden away, maybe. But if you want me to dig them up, there's something I want you to do first. My girl, Valena. It's one of the Alessa's maids, and she's trapped up there in the castle, but the mayor won't send anyone for her. She's been my life since my wife passed on two years ago. Now she's dead, or soon to be. I don't care what happens to me, or the village, or anyone! I'm an old man. Everyone knows we aren't making it through the night. Or are you going to save us? Is that so? Hmm. Maybe it's the drink talking, but you almost sound like you believe that. Tell you what. You want that reward I mentioned. You find Valena. If you look for Valena, I'll reopen the smithy and make some repairs for the militia. I can do that much. Not good enough. Murdoch said the same damn thing, and I didn't believe him either. You are asking a great deal, you wretched little man. I want to promise. Promise me that you'll look for her. That you'll bring her back to me if you can. I'll accept that. It's something to hope for, at least. Oh, lovely. Shall we next begin rescuing kittens from trees? Right then. It seems I have some work to do relighting the forge, and I suppose I'll have to find some iron. Hmm, maybe at the mill. Uh, Murdoch just better send his men here as soon as possible if I'm going to get to all these repairs and get them done by nightfall. If you need anything done, well, just let me know. I've got a lot to do now, so you'll have to excuse me. Well, it looks like Owen's finally doing the repairs we need. The damn fool is falling over a drunk and still manages to make smithying look easy. Good enough, I say. I'll send one of my men to inform Bantigan the militia is ready for battle. I hope you're right. We may just be village folk, but we're going to fight like there's no tomorrow. We could use some extra bodies. Having a veteran like Dwin in the militia would help a lot, but he flat out refuses. He's a trader, a dwarf, lives near the lake, locked himself up in his home with some of his workers, he has. Says he doesn't need any of us. 
We could use somebody with his fighting experience, but he won't come out. There's not much time before sundown. Morale's about what you'd expect. These men aren't soldiers. They're villagers defending their homes, and they're frightened. Since you convinced Owen to start repairs, we're pretty well armed now. That is a relief, let me tell you. We're better off now that we've sufficient arms. I don't know that we're ready for the battle, really, but were we ever? Is there anything else? Right. Let's hope we see morning. It has begun. Please, just leave me alone. We're all going to die. You are of dwarven blood and a stranger amongst us, yet you defend a home that is not your own. We are grateful for that. Perhaps not, but many dwarves do not hold the Chantry and its adherents in high regard. Allow me to introduce myself. I am revered Mother Hannah, head of this Chantry, which for the moment is a place of refuge for these poor villagers. How awful this must be for you all. Is this everyone who's left? All those who cannot defend themselves, yes. They are terrified of tonight's attack. And I fear these walls will not keep them safe. What can I do to help with your task? I have done all I can for them. I pray for them each night and seek the Maker's forgiveness for their sins before they face their deaths. What Sir Perth seeks is something that is not in my power to give. I can pray with them and give them my blessing. But Sir Perth wants me to call upon the Maker to shield them from evil. Well, can't you just tell him the Maker will watch over him? Morale is a powerful thing, you know. You mean you want me to let them think the Maker protects them in a real sense? I will not lie to them like that. I suppose their belief in the Maker's power could inspire them, but it just seems like trickery. Very well. If it keeps them alive, I will do what I must. I have a number of silver-cast holy symbols. Tell Sir Perth that he can have them, and that wearing them will confer the Maker's protection. Now please, let me tend to these poor folk. I must do what I can, and I suggest you do the same. I hear both Murdoch and Sir Perth are ready for nightfall. Excellent news. Of course. I have those few who returned from their quest. You know of this, yes? Yes, I question Isolde's decision to send so many knights in search of this relic. But I am a practical man, whereas she is a woman of great faith. Sir Perth was one of the knights sent on this quest. Perhaps you should speak to him if you wish to learn more. Very well. Luck be with you, my friend. Yes? They say your mother is Flemeth, a witch of the Kukari Wars. They also say that washing your feet in winter makes you catch cold in the head, but we all know that is not true. But sometimes, they are right. And they are right in this. You know the stories about... Of course. You think my mother would let me go without telling me all the stories of her youth? My mother told me stories too. She was the one who kindled my love of the old tales and legends. Hmm. My mother's stories curdled my blood and haunted my...
Wonderful. Intruders. I hope you have a good reason for breaking and entering into my home. Up here on the surface, you'll find we're all the same. And here that means unwelcome. Even a fellow lowborn like yourself. The name's Dwin. Pleased to meet you. Now, kindly tell me why you're here. Surviving. We have supplies to last for quite some time. And my boys and I can swing a weapon better than any of those fools out there. Sure it does. Here I have my own supplies, my boys for protection, and I live and die on my own terms. Hmm. And I have to admit, you have a better chance than most. At least another dwarf is likely to have a few rocks to rub together between their ears. What do you have in mind, then? Let's hear it. Are you serious? Then why bring it up? Do you have something else in mind? And what good would that do me? The Arl's probably dead, and I couldn't care less what Tegan thinks of me. What else you got? So, that's what it comes down to, huh? <laughs> Fine. I'll go, if you want me out there so badly. Don't thank me. I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this because of you. Go tell Murdoch he won. And I better see you out there in the square when those creatures come. The repairs are underway surprisingly quickly, considering how drunk Owen is. We may just make it. Thanks for persuading him to come out here. He's going to be a great help. I just know it. There's not much time before sundown. The men's spirits are high for now. Far better than I expected, to be honest. Dwin's presence makes the men a bit more confident. It helps to know a veteran is on our side tonight. Since you convinced Owen to start repairs, we're pretty well armed now. Overall, I'd say the militia's very ready to fight. Is there anything else? I have a... And well, he should. Because you're a good-for-nothing liar. The Knights of Redcliffe are ready to fight at your disposal. Have you spoken to the revered mother? Has she offered anything? Must we do this? The faith that will protect these men must come from their heart, surely. If they are the same as the symbols worn by their priests, well, that would more than suffice. Of course I do. I will send some men to collect the amulets. Please give my regards to Mother Hannah for seeing No, nothing comes to mind. If you have not spoken to the Mayor, Murdoch, you should. His militia is far... Repairs are underway surprisingly quickly, considering how drunk Owen is. Are you sure? There's still time left if you need to talk. Then good luck to you. You'll need it.
arrives and we survive the night. We are victorious. And though this victory came at great cost, we must remember none of us would be here were it not for the heroism of these good folk beside me. I thank you, good sir. Truly the Maker smiled on us when he sent you here in our darkest hour. Surely these people deserve some small celebration, don't you think? There is time yet. Let us bow our heads and give honor to those who gave their lives in defense of Redcliffe. Murdoch of Redcliffe, Mayor and beloved father, we salute you. You and so many others who have perished here, walk with he who is your maker. Long may you know the peace of his love. With the Maker's favor, the blow we delivered today is enough for me to enter the castle and seek out your Arl. Be wary and watch for signs of renewed attack. We shall return with news as soon as we are able. Now we've no time to waste. Meet me at the mill. We can talk further there. Very well. Phew, some fight. Reminds me why I left Orzammar in the first place. Constant fighting. A warrior's life there is blood, ash, and dust. Though I'm not sure who's dirtier. These creatures are darkspawn. Hey, anything for Redcliffe, right? Whatever. First thing I'm gonna do is get some sleep for about a week. Go celebrate or whatever it is you're gonna do. You won, right? You're a hero or something. So we won the battle? If this is what war is like, with so many people hurt and dying, I don't want to think about what fighting the Darkspawn will be like. Van Tegan or Al Eamon will be calling for volunteers soon, won't they? They'll need an army to fight in the south now. I'll go when they call me, I guess. I'm going to get drunk first, though, if you'll excuse me. The end is upon us. The dead rise, and foul magic spreads across the land! Odd how quiet the castle looks from here. You would think there was nobody inside at all. But I shouldn't delay things further. I had a plan. To enter the castle after the village was secure. There is a secret passage here, in the mill, accessible only to my family. 
Perhaps I should have gone into the castle earlier, but I could not leave the villagers. Maker's breath. Tigan. Thank the Maker, you yet live. Isold. You're alive. How did you... What has happened? I do not have much time to explain. I slipped away from the castle as soon as I saw the battle was over, and I must return quickly. And I... need you to return with me, Tika. Alone. What? I... Who is this man, Tigan? You remember me, Lady Isolde, don't you? Alistair. Of all the... Why are you here? They are Grey Wardens, Isolde. I owe them my life. Pardon me, I... I would exchange pleasantries, but... Considering the circumstances... Please, Lady Isolde, we had no idea anyone was even alive within the castle. We must have some answers. I know you need more of an explanation, but I, I... I don't know what is safe to tell. Tigan, there is a terrible evil within the castle. The dead waken and, and hunt the living. The mage responsible was caught, but still it continues. And I think Connor is going mad. We have survived, but he won't flee the castle. He has seen so much death. You must help him, Tigan. You are his uncle. You could reason with him. I do not know what else to do. He is an infiltrator, I think. Uh, one of the castle staff. We discovered he was poisoning my husband. That is why Eamon fell ill. Eamon was poisoned? He claims an agent of Terran Loghains hired him. He may be lying, however. I cannot say. I beg your pardon? That's a rather impertinent accusation. No! I did not mean... That is to say, I... I... Please, stop this! An evil I cannot fathom holds my son and husband hostage. Came for help. What more do you want from me? But I do not understand what you mean by this evil. Did it create the walking corpses? What is it? Something the mage unleashed. So far it allows Eamon, Connor, and myself to live. The others were not so fortunate. It killed so many, and turned their bodies into walking nightmares. Once it was done with the castle, it struck the village. It wants us to live, but I do not know why. It allowed me to come for you, Tigan, because I begged, because I said Connor needed help. For Connor's sake. I promised I would return quickly and only with Tigan. Tigan, I know you could order your men to follow me when I return to the castle. I beg you not to, for Connor's sake. The king is dead, and we need my brother now more than ever. I will return to the castle with you, Isolde. <gasps> Thank the Maker. Bless you, Tigan. <gasps> Bless you. I cannot let Isolde return alone. Perhaps I can help Connor or Eamon. I have no illusions of dealing with this evil alone. You, on the other hand, have proven quite formidable. Isolde, can you excuse us for a moment? We must confer in private before I return to the castle with you. Please do not take too long. I will be by the bridge. Here's what I propose. I go in with Isolde, and you enter the castle using the secret passage. My signet ring unlocks the door. Perhaps I will distract whatever evil is inside and increase your chances of getting in unnoticed. What do you say? I wish I knew. I don't know any more about this evil force than Isolde seems to. Sir Perth and his men can watch for danger at the castle entrance. If you can open the gates from within, they can move in and help you. I don't think there's anyone else who can help you. If you choose not to go, then it's up to me to do what I can. Here is my signet ring. It will open the lock on the door in the mill. Whatever you do, Eamon is the priority here. If you have to, just get him out of there. Isolde, me, and anyone else, we are expendable.
You are a good man. The Maker smiled on me indeed when he sent you to Redcliffe. So we are just going to send him with that woman? It seems so dangerous. But I can delay no longer. Allow me to bid you farewell. And good luck. <laughs>